Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, dear member. First of all, I hope all of you safe and in good health. It's our great pleasure and honor to welcome you this afternoon in this webinar organized in the framework of the, our participation at Export Bourse, that's mean Export Fair 2021. It's really a major event organized by Flanders Investment and Trade Agency. Thanks to FEET to give us this opportunity to organize this webinar with distinguished speakers. Our participation, we are participating at this uh, export piece for the third time, but it's the first time in this special condition, as you see. The objective of this fair is to open new horizons for international activities for the business community in Flanders in particular and in Belgium in general, in one hand. And the theme of our webinar this afternoon, doing business with Arab countries, points, take a step further. It's really matching with the objective of this export purse. More than that, we are pleased and honored to welcome really two great specialists on this matter, one from the Belgian side and one from the Arab side. From Belgium side, maybe all of you know Mr. Nabil Jajakli. He is the deputy CEO of Credendo. Credendo, maybe all of you know Credendo, but for those who don't know Credendo, you have to know is the fourth European credit insurance group with a presence right across the continent, offering a range of products that provide cover for the risks worldwide. Very active in Arab world. And the presentation of Mr. Nabil Shijakli will cover how can Credendo support your business all around the world but this time being in Arab countries with two concrete examples. From the other side, we have really a great pleasure and honor for me also to welcome His Excellency Dr. Khaled Hanafi from Egypt. His Excellency Dr. Khaled Hanafi is the Secretary General of the Union of Arab Chambers. He is Professor of Economic and International Business with several governmental academic consultancy position. Most recently, he is, was Minister of Supply and Internal Trade in Egypt. Really, the CV of Mr. Hanafi is so long, I will not take, I will not go across his CV, but I please and honored to say he was awarded the best minister for two consecutive years and he is representing the private sector in the Arab world. His presentation will be, he will deliver about the Euro-Arab Strengthening Partnership post-COVID-19. And now, allow me to give the floor to Mr. Nabil Shishakli, C Deputy CEO of Credendo. Mr. Shishakli, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General, for this nice introduction word. First and foremost, good evening, everyone, and I will just fit to thank you for the initiative in this moeilijk tijd. So I'm going to speak about how Credendo can help companies exporting and having project in the Arab world, because, as you know, Arab world is a world of increasing growth very attractive for, for companies, and there are a lot of business to do there. As you said, Kaiser, Credendo is uh, a credit insurance group. Uh, we have two kinds of business. First, we are the official Belgian credit insurance agency, but we have also uh, private activities. We are present in 15 countries from Ireland, and Ireland is a new country, so we are present from Dublin to uh, to Moscow, we've opened in Ireland uh, last year. We have a whole range of products from the uh, classical uh, 
uh, credit, uh, no, credit, public credit agency, sorry, but we have also other products like wall turnover policies, surety, excess of loss and top-ups, in one word, all the credit insurance product. Now, what is our mission? Our mission is to support Belgian international economic relations, but also the international trade by covering the risk that you can find while you are exporting, importing or investing abroad. As public credit agency, we have also a special focus on small and medium enterprises. So, working with Credendo, provide a, all the credit insurance solution with tailor-made covered and uh, covered possibilities for the entire world. So, in concrete term, what does it mean? What is our role? First, I always used to say that we have a prevention role. We are assessing the risk in various countries. We are also assessing the risk of your client when you are working with an international uh, client outside Belgium, outside Europe. It's also useful to know where the risk is. And we have also analysis by sectors. Regarding the countries, for example, we are giving classification from one to seven, seven being the most uh, risky countries and it is translated into color that you see on that map. Secondly, what is a credit insurance? A credit insurance is a system where you can be protected against the risk that you are not paid by your client or the risk that, that your contract is cancelled. Therefore, there are various reasons for being uh, not paid or for having cancellation of your contract. First, you have what we call the commercial risk. It means that your clients what we call the debtor, is not paying for various reasons. It can be from, from bad phase, but it can also be in bankruptcy. Then you have what we call the political risk. Uh, imagine you are exporting in a country where you have a war, where you have some social unrest, but also what is often happening, what is often happening when you have problem of transfer and convertibility of the, uh, of the currency in the country itself. This is the role of the credit insurance to support the export, to support the transaction. Therefore, we have three kinds of product as public credit insurance. First, the credit insurance as such. Secondly, we can also provide financing solution to Belgian enterprises exporting to Arab country uh, directly, but also via our system of guarantees and come back on that. We have also some investment insurance protecting the investment abroad. Let's come now to three examples. First, imagine that you are a company willing to export in Egypt. Here you can see it's a kind of very short analysis of the, of the country. You see above, we have always the classification for the short-term transaction, meaning transaction less than two years. The classification is four. For the medium and long-term classification, so above two years, the classification is five. It means much more risky, but still very good, and we are happy to protect them. Then you see a kind of analysis with the pro and cons, or the risk and challenges. As you can see, for Egypt, things are getting better, things are improving. And I'm very happy to say that we have upgraded the classification, because the macroeconomic stability is back and there is a certain investor confidence. Of course, there are still some challenges, but uh, it is uh, the challenges common to this pandemic crisis. Now, let's give a concrete example. This is a real transaction what that happened. Uh, we used to cover uh, a Belgian dredging company willing to make some dredging work in the port in Egypt. I'm, I'm not going to to give the name of the company, but it's a recurrent transaction. There we have what we call a cash transaction insurance. By cash, we mean that there is no credit behind. So we are covering the commercial risk and the non-payment risk uh, of the project. The project is based by regular payment every month, depending on how the work is uh, being done. And by this insurance, the Belgian company or whatever company is protected against the risk that the client wouldn't pay 
because there are some problems, because it's a problem, a temporary problem, or because they are facing some other issue. The benefit of this uh, cash transaction insurance is that the payment terms are divided in milestone, and this milestone, if they are not respected, the client is anyway paid. So this is a much uh, interesting product that can help in uh, projects in, in Egypt. Second example, uh, one of the major growing country uh, in, 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 the, in this uh, part of the world is Saudi Arabia, which is also part of the top 20 countries. Uh, by the way, they were chairing uh, the, sub, the top 20 uh, submit. There you can see again, the classification it's, is uh, somehow very good. For the short term, we gave a classification two. The major and long term, three. It means that we are very confident about the business in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. Due to some, uh, some reasons that you can see there, there is a very ambitious program, the 2030 program. A large infrastructure programs are launched. And uh, Saudi Arabia, it's a kingdom with a young and educated population. Of course, there are some challenges. And one of the challenges, uh, which is very well known by the prince, is that the dependence on oil sector has to be reduced. And they are working on that. The example I will give here is the example of a transaction. Uh, it is uh, the construction of an industrial petrochemical factory. Uh, it was a Belgian company taking part to a very big project and uh, this project was financed by the bank. What is the role of Credendo here? We are providing a credit insurance to the Belgian exporter uh, against the risk that the contract is cancelled before uh, the ex its execution. There is also a credit. The credit is given by the bank. This credit is very important. It's also paid within 10 years. And it's not the country where we are working. It's not South Africa. Bayer, I have to update my, my slide, but it's Saudi Arabia. Imagine that for some reason, for instance, a delay in the payment, the bank is insured by Credendo on the credit given to uh, the contractor in, in, in Saudi Arabia against the fact that it's not paid for a few months. Then Credendo is insuring this, this non-payment risk so that the exporter is paid and the bank can finance the project without uh, taking uh, any risk. Of course, we are always analyzing the risk of the, of the counterpart. Third example I want to, to, to give is regarding another country, a third country in North Africa, Morocco. Morocco is a, a, a very good and best performing economy in, in this region. As you can see, the classification is two for the short term. We give a four for the medium and long term. It used to have been three during decades, but with the COVID-19 we had downgraded very recently, but I think and I'm sure it's only uh, for this period of time. You see why this is a, a performing economy in the region. And what is what I want to underline is that also Morocco is a gateway to Africa. Of course, there are some challenges and one of the challenges, but it's very often in this part of the world, is more diversification of economy. Here, the example I will give is the third, after having given an example of insurance uh, for cash transaction, a second one was covering a credit for a long time by a credit insurance. Here, imagine that a Belgium company is investing and constructing a factory in the textile industry in Morocco. There, we can provide an insurance against various risks. For example, political violence, business interruption. This is very uh, accurate and very original. And this is one of our uh, added value. We are also covering the risk of embargo. And, uh, of course, uh, other risks like currency inconvertibility, expropriation, and there are default. Then, we are covering in this transaction the equity invested by the Belgian company in uh, the foreign country, in this case, Morocco, against the fact that uh, expropriation could happen or for one reason or another, the dividend cannot be transferred outside. This is very shortly uh, presented. I want to, to, to end 
uh, before the, the question and session answer, by two other product, I told you that we can finance directly some transaction. I've seen here uh, the transaction is up not to five million but to eight billions. It had been upgraded because it has a lot of, 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 of success. And so we are providing uh, direct financing to the Belgian exporter or directly to the client. I will end with two other products, investment insurance, I told you. But we can also provide financial guarantee. For me, financial guarantee, it's also a kind of direct financing because we are guaranteeing the finance, the funding given by a bank to a company at a level of 50, up to 50%, which give more confidence and more uh, security to the bank and which uh, facilitate the access to credit. Uh, voilà. Uh, Kaiser, I've tried to, to keep my 10 minutes giving uh, example and we are very keen and we have a lot of appetite for uh, business with Arab countries. Thank you, Nabil, for your uh, wonderful presentation covering three major Arab countries, as you just mentioned, Egypt from in the middle and Saudi Arabia in the east and Morocco in the west. And they are really a very important partner of Belgium and Europe in, uh, in the same way. And uh, to move uh, directly to Egypt, I am really pleased and honored to welcome uh, His Excellency Dr. Khaled Hanafi, Secretary General of the Union of Arab Ch Chambers. The Union of Arab Chambers is based in Beirut. But as I just mentioned, Dr. Khaled Hanafi, he is, he is representing the private sector in all Arab countries, and he is the Secretary General of the Union of Arab Chambers. That means he is the Secretary General of the chambers in 22 Arab countries. That means he is representing the private sector in 22 Arab countries. Is a major partner for Belgium and major partner for the EU. And we'll come back. His Excellency Dr. Hanafi, he was the former Minister of Supply and Internal Trade in Egypt, and he is really a major supporter of our Chamber of Commerce. Dr. Hanafi, thank you again for your time and for your presence and for your support and for your trust. And uh, I am pleased to give you the floor. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kaiser, and thanks for everybody participating in this event. It's, uh, it's really my pleasure uh, to join you today, this evening, in this uh, webinar. We hope all of us uh, to have face-to-face -face meeting, but uh, thanks that we have this technology that enables us to do our virtual meetings as we do right now. Uh, yes, uh, the Union of Arab Chamber represents the Arab private sector, all the Arab private sector, and for your knowledge, the Arab private sector accounts for around 75% of the GDP of the Arab countries. So the contribution of the private sector is huge when it comes in terms of the GDP of uh, uh, those countries. Also, it contributes uh, in the employment almost by the same percent. So the private sector in the Arab countries considers something very important, in, in especially in the recent uh, years. The Union of Arab Chamber is the representative of the 22 countries, as you mentioned, Mr. Kaiser, but also we have the links through our network in the joint chambers in other 16 foreign countries in the USA, in the UK, in Europe, in Asia, in different places in, in China, in different places around the globe. So we make the network and we benefit from the network the intra-Arab network and the uh, network between the Arab countries and some other uh, foreign uh, economies. Uh, regarding our uh, um, topic today that we talk about uh, the relations uh, between the European Union in general and the Arab countries in general, specifically uh, uh, Belgium and Luxembourg with the Arab countries, uh, of course, we know that uh, the uh, relations, uh, the, the business relations, uh, the economic relations between the Arab countries from one hand and the EU, EU uh, considered good relation, considered strong relations in terms of the uh, rank of each party on the other side as a trading partner. 
So the European Union is one of the major trading partners from uh, uh, the point of view of the Arab countries. And also the Arab countries, they have good uh, business relations from the European Union uh, uh, point of view. However, uh, when we look at this relation over uh, time, we can recognize that over uh, last few years that the relation in terms of trade has started uh, uh, to slow down a little bit. And there are other trading partners that started to appear uh, for the Arab countries specifically, um, namely uh, China, India, and some other Asian countries that started to step in. And they step in not only by trade, which is something very important and interesting, they started to step in using uh, other forms of making the business, like having some direct investment, some joint projects, which enabled them to have some room in the uh, Arab countries. Uh, during the pandemic in the last year, uh, of course, everything everywhere slowed down, regardless the fact that the Arab countries uh, were less vulnerable to this uh, pandemic that we suffered in the Arab region, less in general, less than uh, other countries in other regions. And even in some countries like Egypt, for example, uh, witnessed a positive growth in the GDP and uh, life to some extent in many countries uh, appeared to be very close to the normal uh, business life in, in general. We need to change our view in the relations between the Arab countries from one hand and the European Union on the other side. And of course, uh, Belgium is not an exception in this story. Uh, number one is the need to have a change in the pattern of business, of doing the business. Uh, traditionally and classically, we're talking about classical uh, type of international trade in terms of exporting and importing. And even normally when we measure the relation between the two parties, we measure this relation in terms of exports and imports. What we need to do here is to change this towards more strategic alliance relation. So we need to have more strategic ties, strategic type of doing the business, not just looking to each other's as markets for the products of the other side. We need to have some value added activities jointly uh, 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 come from both sides. So this is number one uh, uh, thing. Number two, um, we need to look uh, from the European Union side to, the, to have a sort of segmentation regarding the Arab countries, because sometimes uh, we hear that we, we, we deal with the Arab countries as if uh, in a group of uh, the South, in other terms, the neighbor relations. No, we need to make it very clear, uh, Arab countries, the 22 countries, they are gathered under the umbrella of the League of Arab State. So this would make things a little bit uh, easier and make it more effective than having this distraction under different types and different names include and exclude some parties uh, each time. Number three, the pattern of doing the business here, I think that we need to consider the fourth industrial revolution as the name of the future between the two parties. One of the major problems that uh, facing this relation is, for example, immigration, that a lot of immigrants come from the Arab countries, some Arab countries towards uh, uh, Europe. And of course, Belgium is one of the, the, uh, the, the destinations of, of, of these immigrants. In order to reduce this over time, we need to build some types of strategic alliance, as I mentioned, that uh, utilizes the fourth industrial revolution tools because the fourth industrial revolution tools help uh, helps the youth uh, to 
uh, exert their effort to benefit from the knowledge and to export their services, not to be physically moving from one side to another and to enjoy, of course, uh, returns that will be sufficient to them not to be uh, encouraged to move to the other side. So it's a very good opportunity now to talk about the fourth industrial revolution tools and how through the strategic alliance, the European Union from one side and the Arab countries from the other side can benefit from this having projects uh, that will help a lot in employing the uh, capacity of the Arab people in their land, in the Arab countries, and to work collectively to target markets in different places around the globe. So this, this is really important because if we are going to go back uh, uh, for the last, like, uh, I mean, 15 years uh, since 19 and, or 17 years, I mean, since 1994, when we started the Barcelona Declaration and we had all the ambitions towards having uh, good links between uh, South and uh, North Mediterranean, as mentioned at this stage, uh, still facing problems in immigration, still uh, moving very slowly in terms of having joint businesses or even trade. So we need to change the pattern. We need to work in a different uh, for with a different formula, having some different. Uh, 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 concepts and language uh, rather than the old one that um, I believe that it will never suit the future, the very near and close future. Uh, and this might uh, challenge the uh, historical and traditional classical relation between the Arab countries and the European Union. So it's, it's very important to work here for uh, having these types of projects. Also, when it comes to the uh, uh, relations here, we need to have markets for exchanging ideas, entrepreneurial spirits, uh, research uh, and development to work together in this aspect. Because the market, uh, the European market from the Arab side is not that big market because it's, it's at the end of the day, when I, when I mean in terms of uh, physical goods, because uh, this market is not that growing in the future. While the Arab markets as well are not very growing in terms of this physical movements of goods, but when it comes again to work collectively in having some value-added concepts that will enable both sides to work in a different formula, utilizing the brains in, in both countries and benefiting from the low unit labor costs in the Arab countries, in many of the Arab countries, this will help a lot. Also, the Arab countries are not uh, 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 homogeneous countries. So we cannot look at the 22 Arab countries as if they are one block homogeneous countries, which is in one hand could be considered an, 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 an edge because we have some Arab countries, they are very rich financially and they can work collectively in, in terms of having uh, some uh, finance for investment under the conditions of having the uh, return of investment to be very high and having employing the markets of the Arab countries also with the technology and the know-how of the European Union and utilizing this fourth industrial revolution uh, 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 tools and uh, of course, we know that uh, Emirates now is about to join the European Bank, which is something considered uh, uh, very uh, interesting uh, nowadays. Also, other segments of the Arab countries are, are, are labor abundant. And labor abundant here are labor abundant uh, specifically in the youth, in the, in the young generation. Those young generation could be uh, uh, utilized as uh, technology producers, or otherwise they will be targeting the European countries as immigrants. So we need to work together. 
to have those as as technologically uh, employed and to produce the fourth industrial revolution products in the IoT, in the artificial intelligence, in the the 3D printing and all the other aspects, to have this good formula, the technology and the know-how, the research from the European side and the low unit labor cost from the other side. So this would enable Europe, would enable each European country to be more competitive and to avoid this withdrawal in their market share in many places around the globe, even in the Arab region. So this should be studied carefully, perfectly, uh, seriously, to think how this can work uh, in, in a formula which is different from the past formula that didn't lead to what needed in this uh, uh, side. Yes, uh, the relations and the, the road is paved between the two sides. The intentions are very good. Uh, the European uh, Union viewed from the Arab countries as uh, friends, as neighbors and everything. But good intentions alone, I don't believe, will be enough if we are really uh, serious. We should work together. We should work collectively. The private sector in the Arab country is ready and very ready to work whether utilizing the financial resources, utilizing the labor, utilizing the entrepreneurial abilities and skills and the motivation that exists with the Arab people. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hanafi, for this complete image about relation. As you just mentioned, there is really a lot of opportunities. The challenges is there, but the opportunities is there in the Arab world. And we, uh, European Union, have to take advantage of this image, complete image, what you gave about the relation. Was it have not to stop on trade relation, business relation between import and export. We are expecting more and more and to take advantage with the diversification of economy in, in the Arab world. And as you just mentioned, the Arab world is not one country, is not one block, is really a diversified countries and there is opportunities of each other. Thank you again, Dr. Khaled Hanafi, and hope to see you soon in Brussels. I hope so. Inshallah, I'll see you in Brussels. Shukran jazilan wa ila al-liqa. Ma'a Good afternoon once more. Masa al khair. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's, it's really a great pleasure for me once more to welcome our two speakers. As you know, Mr. Nabil Shijakli, Deputy CEO of Credendo, and uh, Dr. Khad Hanafi, Secretary General of the Union of Arab Chambers. And now it's time to present you a little bit about the uh, Arab world. As you know, uh, Arab World Chamber of Commerce, I will speak a little bit about the Arab Belgian Luxembourg Chamber of Commerce. Our Chamber of Commerce, we are representing 22 Arab countries. As you know, 22 Arab countries is going from Morocco, Mauritania in the, the west to Mauritania, Arab Gulf in the, in the east. Uh, the Arab world implies really a lot of opportunities, but at the same time, a lot of challenges. It represents uh, about the population is about 350 million uh, consumer, but uh, a large majority of this population is really a young population, as uh, Dr. Hanafi just mentioned. And the total GDP of the Arab world is account for more than about $3 trillion now. Uh, as you know, the economy in the Arab world is uh, still uh, reliant on oil and gas, but you have to know that other countries are show a very strong uh, will in the, of the diversification of their economy, and that uh, really present extra room for business opportuni opportunities, but also to attract uh, foreign investment. As you know, I just mentioned relation between Arab countries and Europe and uh, in general and Belgium in particular. It's not a question of trade relation business, but uh, really in Arab countries they are looking more and more to diversify this relation in mutual investment. There is a lot of opportunities in the, in the Arab countries. As you can see here, the GDP, the income per capita, maybe in the Arab countries, the, the question is, 
you can see in Qatar maybe is the one the top in the world, but at the same time maybe it will be in the, in the last one in the world. This is that showing exactly the Arab world is not homogeneous as you just mentioned, but there is really a lot of diversity in the Arab world. And Belgium is still the seventh economic Arab world is the seventh economic partner for Belgium. And uh, the main three partner of Belgium, and they are, as you know, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Qatar in terms of imports and in terms of exports, United Arab Emirates. The Belgian export to United Arab Emirates represent about 25% of total export to Saudi Arabia, 17%, and to Egypt is 13, 14% of uh, Belgian export to these three countries. That's mean the importance of these countries. What we are exporting mainly, we are exporting not oil and gas, but really uh, there is a lot of opportunities in extract industry and logistic, healthcare, pharmaceutical, construction, finance, engineering, other, other sh and really a lot of opportunities in agriculture and in foodstuffs because you know there is a large deficit in Arab countries. The deficit in Arab countries in terms of uh, foodstuffs is about $100 billion a year. That means there is really large opportunities there. Arab, Arab countries is really the seventh economic partner of Belgium and uh, Main three partners, uh, main three partners of uh, Belgium is uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates and Qatar in terms of imports and in terms of export. You can see the uh, United Arab Emirates uh, representing 25% of Belgian export to Arab world. Kingdom of Saudi Arabia representing 17% and Egypt represent 13 to 14% of Belgian export. Uh, what we are exporting, mainly chemicals and uh, birds, uh, early machinery, uh, metals, uh, so on, so on. This is uh, our export to Arab countries. Thanks to the support of the General Union, I will go now to what is representing the Arab-Belgian Chamber of Commerce. As you can see, thanks to the support of the Union of Arab Chamber of Commerce, uh, our chamber have really a very strong network in the Arab world. As I just mentioned, the General Union is representing the Chamber of Commerce in all Arab world, and we are part of this network. That means we are giving us a very strong network, not only in Belgium and Luxembourg, but also in the, in the Arab world. Uh, in terms of uh, some uh, advices for the people who want to deal with Arab countries, I would like to to highlight the importance of trust and human relation between uh, with Arab uh, partners, uh, which require really a good network, but not also you have to the right expertise and the support uh, along of your business in uh, this uh, in this area. Uh, and to conclude, uh, I would like to mention uh, to thanks first of all our partners in Belgium and in Luxembourg and in Arab countries. I would like to thank our speakers. I would like to mention only uh, don't ask what you can do to the Arab Chamber, but you can ask what the Arab Chamber can do for you. Thanks again and uh, good afternoon.